It's Carrie. In today's Friday research break, I'm going to be talking about the PRISMA Statement. The PRISMA Statement is a reporting guideline. It stands for the Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses. The PRISMA Statement can be found at prismastatement.org. I'll link to this in the video description below. If you are authoring a systematic review and or meta-analysis, it is of critical importance that you read the PRISMA statement thoroughly and review the PRISMA checklist and the PRISMA flow diagram. Please keep in mind that the PRISMA is meant to be a reporting guideline and not a methods or conducting guideline. PRISMA contains a 27-item checklist. Each item falls under one of six sections and provides guidance for how to report your systematic review. There is a section for title, abstract, introduction, results, discussion, and finally, other information. The Prisma Statement also includes the Prisma Flow Diagram. It is a diagram that details your literature search, your eligibility screening steps, and your included and excluded articles. You've probably seen this before. Today I want to go over the 27 item checklist to help you become familiar with each reporting standard. The first item is for the title and it only asks that you identify the report as a systematic review in the title. This will make it easier for readers to identify it as such. The second item asks that you follow the Prisma for Abstracts checklist. Prisma for Abstracts is an extension of the Prisma statement and can be found on the Prisma website under Extensions. I'll put a link to the Prisma for Abstracts extension in the video description below. The third item asks that you describe the rationale for the review in the context of existing knowledge. For this, you may have to provide some background information. The next item is number four, to provide an explicit statement of the objective or question that the review addresses. Again, this helps provide clarity for the reader. Then we move into the method section. This is the lengthiest part of the checklist. Item five is to specify the inclusion and exclusion criteria for the review and describe how studies were grouped for synthesis. Item six, specify all databases, registers, websites, organizations, reference lists, and other sources searched or consulted to identify studies. Specify the date when each source was last searched or consulted. In fact, this is where you should consult the Prisma S. The Prisma S is the extension for reporting your search, and it applies to both item 6 and item 7 of the Prisma 2020 checklist. Item 7 is to present the full search strategies for all databases, registers, and websites, including any filters or limits used. Remember, if you've watched any of my previous videos on applying limits or filters, you know that it's important to cite your published filters and to give credit to the filter creator or creators. I'll put a link to the Prisma S extension in the video description below. Item 8. After the search is completed, you will need to specify the methods used to decide whether a study met the inclusion criteria, including how many reviewers screened each record and each report retrieved, and whether they worked independently, and if applicable, the details of the tools used in the process. So for example, if you used Covidence, a tool for systematic review screening, you should say so and you should cite Covidence. Item 9 asks you to specify the methods used to collect data from reports, including how many reviewers collected data, whether they worked independently, any processes for obtaining or confirming data from study investigators, and if applicable, details of the tools used for the process. So if, for example, you used Covidence or Distiller for data abstraction, you will need to note that and cite them. Item 10A requests that you list and define all outcomes for which data were sought. Specify whether all results that were compatible with each outcome domain in each study were sought, and if not, the methods used to decide which results to collect. Item 10b requests that you list and define all other variables for which data were sought and to describe any assumptions made about missing or unclear information. In item 11, Prisma asks you to specify the methods used to assess 
risk of bias in the included studies, including details of the tools used, how many reviewers assessed each study, and whether they worked independently, and if applicable, details of the automation tools used in the process. In item 12, authors are asked to specify for each outcome the effect measure used in the synthesis or presentation of results. This could be the risk ratio or the mean difference. In 13a, authors are asked to describe the processes used to decide which studies were eligible for each synthesis. In 13b, authors are asked to describe any methods required to prepare the data for presentation or synthesis, such as handling of missing summary statistics or data conversions. In 13c, authors are asked to describe any methods used to tabulate or visually display results of individual studies and synthesis. In 13D, you will need to describe any methods used to synthesize results and provide a rationale for that choice. If meta-analysis is performed, describe the models, methods, and software packages. In 13E, you will need to describe any methods used to explore possible causes of heterogeneity among study results, such as a subgroup analysis or a meta-regression. In 13F, describe any sensitivity analysis conducted to assess robustness of the synthesized results. Moving right along, item 14 requests that you describe any methods used to assess risk of bias due to missing results in a synthesis, such as those arising from reporting biases. In item 15, you must describe any methods used to assess certainty or confidence in the body of evidence for an outcome. Now we are in the section called Results. Item 16A. Describe the results of the search and selection process, from the number of records identified in the search to the number of studies included in the review. This is where you can use the Prisma Flow diagram that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Item 16B. Cite studies that might appear to meet the inclusion criteria, but which were excluded and explain why they were excluded. Item 17, cite each included study and present its characteristics. In item 18, you will need to present assessments of risk of bias for each included study. In item 19, authors are asked to, for each outcome and for each study, present a summary statistics table and an effect estimate and its precision, such as a confidence interval. In item 20A, Authors are asked to, for each synthesis, briefly summarize the characteristics and risk of bias among contributing studies. 20b, present results of all statistical synthesis conducted. If meta-analysis was performed, present for each the summary estimate and its precision and measures of statistical heterogeneity. If comparing groups, describe the direction of the effect. Item 20c, present results of all investigations of possible causes of heterogeneity among study results. In item 20D, authors are asked to present results of all sensitivity analyses conducted to assess the robustness of the synthesized results. Item 21, present assessments of risk of bias due to missing results arising from reporting biases for each synthesis assessed. In item 22, authors are asked to present assessments of certainty or confidence in the body of evidence for each outcome. Assessed. Now we move into the discussion section, which has items 23A through 23D. 23A requests authors to provide a general interpretation of the results in the context of other evidence. Item 23B requests that authors discuss any limitations of the evidence included in the review. Item 23C asks authors to discuss any limitations of the review process used. In my experience, a limitation could be something like limiting to English because your team does not have the capacity to translate articles, although limitations can be wide-ranging. Finally, item 23D asks authors to discuss the implications of the results for practice, policy, and future research. Then we move on to the last section called Other Information. This covers things like registration and protocol, support, competing interests, and finally, availability of data, code, and other materials. Item 24, provide registration information for the review, 
including register name and registration number, or state that the review was not registered. Remember that you can register systematic reviews in a platform called Prospero. There are other registration platforms such as OSF, or Open Science Framework, and yet others. Make sure you check with your colleagues or ask a librarian where you can register your systematic review. Item 24B asks you to indicate where the review protocol can be accessed or state that no protocol was prepared. Item 24C asks authors to describe and explain any amendments to information provided at registration or in the protocol. Item 25 asks authors to describe sources of financial or non-financial support for the review and the role of the funders or sponsors in the review. Item 26 asks authors to declare any competing interests or conflicts of interest. And finally, the last item, item 27. Item 27 asks authors to report which of the following are publicly available and where they can be found. Template data collection forms, data extracted from included studies, data used for all analysis, analytic code, and any other materials used in the review. Now you know about each of the 27 items found in the PRISMA 2020 checklist. Remember that PRISMA stands for Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses. Note that it is not to be used for a conducting guideline. When you reference it in your systematic review, you can simply note that the review is reported according to PRISMA. It is simply a reporting guideline. That's it. So it's that easy. And now that you know how easy it is, please like, share, and subscribe. <music>